What's going on? On today's episode, we're talking about how to stop doing every single thing in your business. We're going to give you what it feels for us to have these problems. How do we get away from doing everything on your business? And what are some of the benefits of once you cross that line and you figure out that, oh man, I don't have to put my fingers on everything on my business. I can just kind of have a nice little view of, of, of my dashboard of things in my business um, and still run smoothly. Check it out. This is The Marketing Natives, providing actionable ways to grow, improve, and succeed in your business. And now, your hosts, Christian and Aaron. All right, we are back. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, Christian, if you can see him on video, he's a little tanner. He's been sitting in a tanning bed. Yep, um, all day, every day, baby. Nice. They said that the UV lights are like really bad, like cancerous. So you probably mm-hmm. shouldn't do that. I don't use the cancer ones. Oh, okay. You yeah. use the, the, the blue lights, lights and low lights and just, you wear the glasses. Yep. I mean, it works pretty well. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah it's it. more tan than red. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you were down at the beach in Galveston. Mm-hmm. So for those who don't know Galveston Beach, what's don't it go. like? <laughs> <laughs> don't go. Was it not good? Um, it was good. It was all right. right. I mean, just, I mean, I'm used to uh, Florida. Different kind of beach, yeah. Florida, Puerto Rico, you know. Right. A little bit of clearer waters, uh, less waves. Oh, yeah, there's white cap. That's Yeah, there's white yeah. caps out there. There's a constant, like, shh, shh, shh. So, I mean, you can get in the water, but it's just, it's not fun to stay in the water. Right. Know? Where in Puerto Rico, you go to some beaches, not all of them, but some. Same as Florida. Where, yeah, it's not as, as wavy, it's not as crazy, so you can kind of sit in the water and enjoy yourself. Chill. Or, yeah, Galveston, it was, it was just crazy. Yeah. I don't know if it was like that every time, but yeah. Well, it's probably not. We're in the middle of like a, what is it? Um, not a well, hur- hurricane season. It's kind of starting, yeah. Right. Yeah, but so. it's a, it's hitting, I have friends that are in Gulf Shores right now and some friends that are like in Florida and they're getting, it's rain like all week. But it's not a, yeah. it's a depression or whatever the heck they call it. Tropical a, storm, yeah. Yeah. So anyway. All right, so today's topic is stop doing everything in your business, and this is something we're still working on, but we want to give you guys some information or things that we've kind of, hopefully we're a couple steps ahead of you that you can use and implement so you can save yourself some time. Um, So like early on in the company, Christian and I would literally do everything. So if it was design work, Christian pretty much handled everything on that end, like if it was our YouTube covers, I think in the very beginning, you also were editing tip for tip, which is our, like our video show. Um, I don't think we had the, po- we didn't have the podcast at that point. So you weren't doing anything with that. Um, but when we got it, I did start doing yeah the cover photos for the podcast. Right. Um, Uploading them to the website. Yeah. I don't know. Was I doing the editing? For the podcast? No, I think I've always done that. You've always done that. Okay. Yeah, because f- uh, we, we hired somebody, which was nice, to basically set up Logic and I set it up on my computer, and so I just edited it from there. Yeah. Regardless, everything design-wise or, like, the creative or to do the web with the website, you always did. And then, like, the marketing or, like, any types of, like, financial stuff like that, I just handled literally everything. Mm-hmm. And we did that for a year, year and a half, at, l- at least. No, a couple, probably two, two and a half years, actually. Yeah. No HR department because it was just us two for the longest time. Right. Um, yeah, nobody – no. No outside contractors, no nothing to handle like emails or yeah, checking our anything. emails. Plus, we weren't efficient either. It's more like every email that came in, let's check it right then, let's do whatever. Um, but I think that what we realized, or at least now looking back, is that it was just super inefficient to do everything. Even though we were probably the best at doing it, you're the best at probably making the graphics or the best at doing everything that you did but it just wasn't efficient or to help you to scale so this podcast or this episode is more for those people who are have probably been around for a year maybe a year and a half or so and are looking to hire a team or looking to stop doing so much day-to-day in their business and work on the business instead of in it yeah i mean i think i mean i'm i don't know maybe not every business but i think majority of businesses when you start by yourself right i think there is a time period of you doing everything. Mm-hmm. Um, one, you may not have as much business right now to, mm-hmm. you know, fill up your time, <laughs> you know, for the day. So yeah, back then I had time to edit the tip for tip video, right? And then do the graphics for the video, and then do the posting, and then come up with the copy. So like to do all of that, it's um, a lot. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a lot. Um, 
yeah, as you become busier and busier, that's when you need to start, yeah, outsourcing or hiring mm-hmm. um, in order to get everything done correctly. Well, and I think that something that we probably should have done before even that was like, okay, maybe we should have hired somebody. Well, like as we saw the company, you obviously need to know your numbers, but like saw the company growing, we should have hired somebody maybe six months prior before we did Mm -hmm. so that you know, like, okay, we need somebody in six months. Well, to get them up to speed, we need them by these six months. Because now as we've learned from hiring people, it's like, they really take six months, if not a year, before they're like really into the the position. So, if you hire six months early, you may get somebody who's right and ready right when you need them, mm-hmm. um, or only have to train them for six months versus a whole year. So it's it's helpful in that sense too, because you think somebody's just going to be able to walk in and like, oh, I, I know everything, and they know all your knowledge, and they have everything ready to go. Yeah, and I think what's important is that time period where you are doing everything by yourself mm-hmm. is that. Uh, and we didn't do this, that you record everything that you do, right? Yeah, those operating procedures. Yeah, so whether it's like, I don't know, maybe some audio files where you're just saying it out loud um, or some Google Docs where you're just typing in, step one, mm-hmm. open the computer, step yeah. two, right? So everything that you are currently doing um, during that initial period where you're doing it all yourself, uh, it's very, very important. Yeah, just write it down or have it, you know, as a voice memo or something um, where you can go back to it. Because, yeah, when you're ready to hire someone, I think that year, that six month to the year period, I think it gets condensed a lot if you have something in place and Mm -hmm. some sort of structure to it um, where it's easier to, you know, implement this person and make it fit like a puzzle with you um, because they know exactly, you know, what happens at each stage. Right. And they'll be able to, if they have previous experience in that position, they'll be able to sort of just optimize, right? What you've already came up with. Yeah, it's like this is good, work, but right. I, I can make it better. Yeah, and I, I mean, I do believe like, yeah, a lot of people in us, for example, like we've come up with our own processes and stuff and it they just get better over time, mm-hmm. right? We either add a step, get rid of something, optimize, whatever, X, Y, and Z. So I think it's good to not have previous knowledge of certain things or certain processes, maybe like the, your hiring process, for example, mm-hmm. um, or if you're marketing, um, because you sort of, by trial and error, you're seeing what actually works for your company mm-hmm. and what works for you as a person too. Um, and then when those extra pieces come in, then that's when you kind of optimize and mm-hmm. make it run smoother. Yeah, I feel like that's the stage we're finally at now, where like we have the the bones to everything, mm-hmm. and it's the bare it was the bare bones, and it's getting better. But now it's like, okay, how do we make this even better? Which is it's kind of fun. Like, hey, this used to take us, um, or like last week we could have spent or lost $2,400 and we didn't make anything, but we at least gained back what we were going to lose because we found out an inefficiency or something. Mm-hmm. So that's where you kind of like optimize uh, the profit. So I, my question, I guess, from this and is also for anybody listening. Um, and if you're on YouTube, leave a comment or Facebook, leave a comment. If you're on the podcast, um, just hit us back up on Instagram. But um, this is more so for a Christian and for anybody else is like, so what problems do you think like that you face? I'm, I'll speak for myself too, but like what problems do you feel like you face with doing like everything in the business? I mean, problems from doing everything, obviously lack of sleep, <laughs> right? Um, no eating. Um, no, I mean, I, it's, it's just time. Like it's just, it's, it goes to, yeah. I mean, your, your priorities in, in the business. So, um, I mean, you doing everything, you're, you're not going to be able to prioritize what's important, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, it will give you an idea of what's important. Right. Um, because I think internally you do sort of prioritize, you know, some of the things that you know, okay, in order for me to get paid tomorrow, I'm like, I need to do X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, you have to, you know, do everything. So I think the time commitment and then priorities um, are, I would say, the some of the biggest problems. Um when you're trying to do everything it's i think it's hard to yeah to some extent it's hard to prioritize when you have a list of 30 things that you need to you know finish. right or you know that it's not possible to finish those things but you mm-hmm. still have to like finish them i think yeah. for me it's also we didn't know where the like the the blind like our blinders were on so like one of the problems is you can't see what you don't know what you don't know about what's not working for the business Mm -hmm. So you don't realize, oh, we needed to hire a project manager or we need to hire, you know, uh, another person to help with campaigns. We 
we can't do it because we're so focused on the day to day. And then even if we were, we're going to hire somebody like I can't hire somebody because I'm too busy in the day to day. So then it's just like a catch 22 of like, do I sacrifice what I'm doing every day and go hire somebody or do I get done what I need to get done today and not fall behind? So this is like that hamster wheel constantly like, you know, what do you do? And I think it's, sometimes it's hard to like jump off of that hamster wheel. Um, luckily for us, we had, again, each other. So there's two of us and one of us could probably help out the other one or vice versa. But, um, you know, if you're a solo business owner and it's just you right now, or if you have two people with you, how do you get to a third or a fourth or whatever? And I think that's kind of the hard part. It's then those two or three usually are probably like us. They're like, everybody's doing the day-to-day tasks. Like three people, you're not working on the business. You're mainly working in it too. So I think that's a, I mean, that's a big problem. Yeah. And how do you determine, you know, what that position, that next position will be mm-hmm. not even position, but what, um, what you need to outsource. Right. right. Like, is it, did you go like, I don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to do the accounting. So right. that's the first thing that gets outsourced. So that gives me, you know, I don't know, six hours a week, you know, that I can, um, mm-hmm. work on something else. Do you, would you take that route or is it more of, I don't well, know. Well, I think that's good for what we've done now recently. Like, what do we not want to do anymore? And mm-hmm. I think that's a bigger like growth stage. It's more so like, what are you not good at? So you may love, like Christian may love doing the accounting, but it's like, you're not good at it. Like you may love it, but mm-hmm. we have big problems there. So I think it's like the early stage is probably figuring out, okay, what am I not good at? And then also keeping what I enjoy doing and what I'm good at. So like doing that part of it. But now like we would just recently went through and figured out, okay, like who do we need, like where do we need to hire? Um, and it's more so, okay, what do we not want to do anymore? Mm-hmm. Not, not just what are we not good at? Because sometimes you may be the best person for website for our company, but at the same time, you may not have capacity or may not want to do every single project. So now that you don't want that or whatever the case may be, now we need to look for somebody to fill that position. But I think that that's what happens after you figure out the person who needs to fill the gap that you have. Like for us, one thing I think we needed to figure out was a project manager. Like neither one of us were like, like I handled the project management side, but it means that I slacked on the ad side and everything else. So even though I like doing it, I wasn't the best person for it because we needed somebody dedicated to it. Mm-hmm. So I think that's probably the route I would go. But I don't know. I think every company is maybe a little different, but that's probably some general knowledge, I guess, to start with. Yeah. And how, I mean, we're a marketing agency, so we don't outsource our marketing. Right. Um, but I mean, looking at, I don't know, will be a good example for a company that might outsource everything marketing related everything marketing related i mean like like a roofer i don't know yeah i mean although roofing i mean there's also that component of i guess word of mouth and Mm -hmm. you know everybody has that word of mouth though too handshaking and all that i think i would say like a finance like if you're looking white collar pretty much like a cpa or a financial services or like a doctor any of those people because they're the only ones who can do like that particular task. Mm-hmm. Like with a roofer, you can still, I think you can still own the business and still have people put on the roof, but nobody can do like the operation side of like running the business. CPA, like only the CPA can look at it, but you can have a bookkeeper do 90% of it and a CPA to look over it or a financial mm-hmm. advisor. I'll meet with them once a year to make sure and make the trades, but I can have a junior associate help with stuff too. Mm-hmm. So I think that's probably the, you know, the white collar. That, I don't like to use the word white collar, but yeah, a white collar or more professional style services would probably be most likely to align with something or outsource um, like us. And I I would think like any industry that's like up and coming. So like if you think about roofing, um, to me, I feel like they're like five years behind every other industry. Same thing with a CPA. Like you don't see cool technology happening with roofing or cool technology happening with a CPA. I don't know. So that's like, to me, a doctor's office, you do. And you have like a cool CRM and they like, they would outsource their marketing and they would outsource sales and stuff like that. Cause they, uh, I don't know. There's people who are like kind of focused on that market, I guess more, it's closer to a marketing agency, I guess, other than the service that they're doing. Like they're providing a service just like we are each month or each week or quarterly or whatever. They're going to do the same thing, um, and provide value or services for their businesses or the, consumers they're working with Mm -hmm. so you're saying like doctor's offices they don't have 
Are you talking about like kind of like a HubSpot type dashboard where they can do all their marketing through that? No, I think they do have that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they do. So what are you talking about? Like the technology is not there with. No, for for those people, I think they are. For like a CPA or a roofer, I'm thinking they're not. Okay. Like a roofer, I mean, they have the closest thing they have is um, I can't remember what the CRM is. Um, it'll come to, back to me later, but they have something, but it's so bad. Like we have clients who are roofers, and we go into it, and it's like archaic. Like it's nine, Windows ninety eight kind of stuff, like pushing things around. Mm-hmm. It's really bad. So I'm not going to really tell you which company it is on here. I'll bash them, but it's really bad. There's nothing that people are like, oh, let's create a roofing CRM. There's money in this. I'm mm-hmm. sure that there is, but they just don't have it. Something like a doctor where they people are like, ah, these people, they do have money. Or marketing agencies. I won't tell you how much we spent on technology, but I was adding it up over this last week, and it's we spend a lot of money on technology every month, and they know it. Like companies know that we, we spend money on technology. So anyway, we digress a, a little bit, but I think it's important um, to talk about like doing everything. And I think we have that false sense of security with, with technology. Oh, this service will save me hours, so I don't need to hire somebody. And I'll mm-hmm. do everything myself because this will be faster. Yeah. Um, and I think that kind of brings up like the point, like what's a, what are some ways we can easily transition out of doing everything in the business? I think the first step probably is technology. Um, but I'm thinking deeper question like, so for you um, and me too, it's probably more like we want the control. I think every business owner wants the control. Like you want the design to look a certain way. And I really wish you weren't on vacation this last week because I had a design that was like uh, for a wedding invitation for Justin and Ruby. And it was like five by seven. And it was like five or six words or whatever. And I sent it to no limits. And um, it's just a service that we use. Anyway, they, they did the design, but it was absolutely horrible. <laughs> I was like, okay, Christian could have done this in literally 10 minutes. He's gone. Um, but I think that's another thing is like you want to control the way that the design looks. So if BitBrainy mm-hmm. puts out something, you're like, no, 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 I want to touch this and I want to hold on to this. So like how do you give up the ropes? I mean, I think it goes back to having the right people in the right place, right? So we know that that, so- that technology or software that we use for our design is not at the level that we want it, right? Right. Um, I think it helped us a lot with, yeah, the load management. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't think it was the 100% the the right seat, right, for that position, which is just outsourcing sort of graphic design stuff. Yeah, the mundane, you know, graphics that 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 we have to do on a daily basis. Um, So yeah, I think I mean that's number one is having the right person in the right place or the right technology in the right place, right? Or the right software or the right outsourced or the right. So that would help you ease your mind. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, knowing that yeah, you had that person in the right place would get rid of the going back and forth with oh, this is not what I want, this is what I want, this is not what I want. You know, it Um, happens like twenty different variations. (laughs) Um, Yeah, you. I mean, I think you know with any business owner you need to have time to sort of at least have your eyes on everything. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not about having your hands and, and having a say on everything on the business. Um, but I think having your eyes on everything um, still is important right? Um, to have a pulse on, on your business. But that doesn't mean that you have to do it, you know, every day. Right. But you do need to carve that time out to, you know, okay, this day I'm going over, I don't know. Financial. Financial stuff. Yeah. just And, and not, Again, not doing it. It's just you're looking at the dashboard. And you're looking at it. okay. This is this. yeah. This is good. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, I think that 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 transition is yeah. Just knowing, you know, that you had the right person in the right place, so that you don't go back to the time consuming aspect of doing everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think realizing that eighty percent is better than than nothing too. Yeah. Like if we were, so that's the thing I keep telling myself. Like, is this eighty percent of what I want? Yes. Okay, then don't say anything. Mm-hmm. Is this 50% of what I want? Yes. Okay, I'm going to say something because it's a major thing. Right. Um, but yeah, it's just asking like, okay, is this close enough? Is this going to pass the standard of quality that we want? And is it going to get us from point A to point B? Does it matter that it was two paragraphs long versus three if you're talking about a piece of copy or does the design have like a pastel versus like a bright color? It's like, mm-hmm. does it really matter that much? Yeah. Um, 
So I think that's the question I keep asking myself and that's been helping me transition a little bit. So it's like, okay, I wouldn't have said that to a client, but they're okay with it. And the client's like, you know, the world didn't blow up. So basically it's right. okay. Yeah. And I think, I mean, like you said earlier, like I think the, the easy transition, I think comes to different stages and stage one is I think technology or software. Mm-hmm. Um, I think stage two is just virtual assistants or contractor, contractors. And then yeah. That stage three is actually hiring someone. That's um, a big step right position. there. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. And I think, I don't know. I believe everyone should sort of follow those steps. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it will be a, yeah, an easier transition than, you know, you out of the blue hiring someone and you don't have anything in place, right? No processes. There's, mm-hmm. you know, no accounting software that you're currently using, you know, like right. you just have an envelope with receipts and that's how you've been like, I don't know. I think that that transition of, yeah, using technology software, using some sort of contractor outsourcing and then hiring internally um, is sort of like the, the pillars to stop doing everything. Right. Um, and having a good system in place. Yeah. And I guess the only other way that you could go about it, which I, this probably wouldn't be a great podcast for you, is that if you already were funded and you had somebody like, great, I'm going to hire somebody with 10 years of experience. Obviously, what we're saying here is not for those people because you can go and hire them and they're going to be able to help you right away. But we're talking about people who are like independent business owners, like you own it yourself or, um, you know, part of a franchise or something like that. But like, it's, it, you're not a, I guess what is the word like uh you're not looking for funding or anything like that or you're fully funded or anything yeah but i mean i, I also i kind of look at it it's the same right like let's say you know we're we're a startup and we don't have anything in place but we hire this one guy to do you know our finances or accounting mm-hmm. like it's gonna be that one guy who's gonna be in charge of a lot of different things if it's a big enough company you right. Know, right off the bat um so he will probably go through those stages right or finding some sort of software or whatever yeah. to you know, ease his time, right? Because then it goes back to, yeah, those departments, right? You have those the main people who's in charge and mm-hmm. they have to c- kind of go through the same process of, okay, we need to find some sort of software technology to help me alleviate right. you know, all this and then potentially contractors or whatever and then potentially having people under him mm-hmm. or that person, him and her. Um, so, yeah, it does kind of follow the same progression. It's yeah. just a little, bit, a little bit different, but, yeah, pretty much the same. Because I think, I mean, it goes the same with, like, us, like, mm-hmm. you know, we're kind of doing it right now with, you know, project management and then having someone take care of like, you know, the graphics and then having someone internally do more of the website and, mm-hmm. and all that. Um, it just kind of starts branching off. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah, I guess there's no right or wrong way to grow, but it, it typically follows that pattern. Hey, local business owners, if you're ready to grow your business online without having to work more in your business and you can spend more time on it, we created a free training on how to attract, qualify, and convert more leads online. It's 38 minutes. It's going to take a little bit of your time, but it's going to have a huge benefit. It's completely free. Make sure you click below in the description, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on the podcast, everything's there that you need. Go grab the training now. Okay, so my question for you today is... Ooh, nice. I like questions. uh, What are the benefits of not doing everything yourself? Yeah, so like, I I mean, I gave an example. Last week, we're able to, like, um, or I was able to look at something and say, okay, great, this is how much time we're spending on something. This is what we're charging. This is, you know, what we need to be charging or, like, how can we alleviate a problem? But it allowed me to kind of see the businesses from a little like a 30,000 foot view and say, okay, great. Well, we negotiated a a rate that I wouldn't have been able to do before with a copywriter um, to get it down to where we were at least profitable on something. And then we're able to call a client or whatever else and negotiate like, okay, let's talk about a transition period. Um, But doing things like that allowed for um, us to like, like I said, it's not necessarily like we're making money. It's just how can we be more profitable in the long term? So I think that's where it's like the next level things. Like the benefit is that you can get better at efficiencies and also able to create like this template we're using for the podcast. Um, it's just going to be so much easier in the future. We don't have to waste. All right, Christian wastes 15 minutes here and Aaron wastes 15 minutes here and then 30 minutes of setup. So it's like long term probably saving 
you know, an hour every time that we do the podcast. So it allows you to work on the business, Mm -hmm. which is the biggest thing you want to do. Because when you work on the business, I feel like these little things that we're doing now that are working on the business will be like huge things, you know, in the next 90 days or even 30 days of like, okay, dang, we're all like leveling up. Um, So I think that's one of the biggest benefits. What about you? I mean, I would say the same thing. Like it just gives you, yeah, more time to, like you're saying, fly over your business and Mm -hmm. look at the inefficiencies look at where you can improve, look at where, yeah, you might be falling through the cracks on, you know, certain areas Mm -hmm. Um, where, yeah, like you said earlier, like when you're doing everything, you just have these blinders on, you know, this is the most important thing that I need to do right now. And then this is the the next most important thing that I need to do right now. Um, You don't get a chance to kind of look back and see the bigger picture. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that. I think one of the biggest things that I've learned here even recently is that like if it was doing a carrot, it's like mentality, carrot, and then it's like strategy, carrot, like the this angle or whatever. Mm-hmm. Those are on the podcast. It's like a, a less than sign. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, yeah, mentality, strategy, and then tactics. And I think that when you move into this, um, like it helps the transition or the benefit of transitioning this way is that you get to see – what needs to happen um, in the business, which is shifting the mindset um, and like what needs to happen. Like, okay, great. This is the way that the business can grow. Like, I think if you have the blinders on, like what I'm trying to say is like, if you had the blinders on, you don't realize that the company could go exponentially because you're like, no, we've done the same thing over and over again. This is all I have time for versus now the benefit is, oh, wow, we have so much more inefficiencies over here. We fixed these. Here's the mindset I have. We can grow exponentially. Great, let's develop a strategy because I have the time for it now. And what are the tactics to get there? And tactics could be oh, messenger ads or Instagram stories or whatever else. But I think what I've recently learned is that most people start on the other spectrum. They're like, oh, messenger ads or like Facebook ads or Instagram stories or whatever else is new, TikTok. They start there and then they come up with a strategy and then they're like, oh, like we have all these problems or inefficiencies in our business, so it doesn't work. When really, if they go the other way and change their mindset about how things should happen, and then they come up with a strategy, and then they say, okay, this strategy will work across many platforms, then you can pick whichever tactic you want. So I think that helps you transition. It also helps with the benefits. Um, and really, it also helps you prepare mentally because you're like, I've already done all this grunt work ahead of time, so now the tactic becomes like easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very true. And I think I was trying to, in my head, I know you were alluding more towards like the marketing side of things, but I think, I mean, it works with everything else. Um, If you have that growth mentality, right? Or like, I want to go from X to Z, you know, okay, what's the strategy behind that? Okay, then what are the tactics behind it? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that definitely helps you, yeah, figure out what are the gaps, you know, what's the technology that you need to fill it in or what's the, Mm -hmm. uh, the outsource or what's the new hire? Um, that you need so i mean yeah absolutely yes i think one of the last things we we'll give to you guys too is that um you should definitely be either reading whether well, it doesn't have to be a book but a pot uh or listening or something to continue to grow your mindset for the business because if you don't have that then the rest of everything else won't necessarily make sense i think there's a lot of people who know how to make money but they just get capped out because they their mental the mentality side doesn't really grow. So it doesn't have to be a book. It could just be an inspirational person on Instagram. But as long as you're learning in the business Mm -hmm. um, and educating yourself, we take a lot of courses. I think that's kind of rare about our agency, just an insight. But we do, I mean, we spend thousands of dollars every year on like development, personal development and like development with courses and stuff. I think that's helped us develop the education side to make better decisions for strategy, to help with the tactics. So that's probably the last piece of parting advice that I would tell you is just to kind of always be learning with that. Yeah. And I think, I mean, our coaches also said the uh, change of place, change of perspective. Yeah. So I think that also helps a lot too, where, you know, you're so much in the business on an everyday basis that it may be hard to, for you to even have that 30,000 view look mm-hmm. by just stopping everything and staying to the same place. Um, a lot of times it just takes, you know, maybe a long walk or mm-hmm. just going to like the lake and just sitting for in silence for a while. Mm-hmm. Right. In order to get that clarity um, or just getting away and doing the reading and doing the learning. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that, like I said, I mean, yes, change of place, change of perspective. And that's, I think that's important to 
go and change in your by changing your mindset right it makes it a lot easier mm-hmm. um when you're looking at different angles um and by looking at different angles like just literally physically going to a different place helps you mentally uh, mm-hmm. to do that absolutely all right if this is your guys's first time ever listening to the podcast whether you're on youtube whether you're watching um on facebook or you're on um, itunes however you're listening to this make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss out on any episodes that come up in the future Uh, we put out new content every single monday Um, and if you've been listening for a while please make sure to go leave us an honest rating and review and um if you do, make sure you screenshot that, tag us on Bitbrain in your Instagram stories, and we will repost, reach back out to you guys. All right, so if you want free training that takes you through our proven three-step process to help you attract, qualify, and convert more leads online, give you more time back in your business so you can work on it instead of in it, make sure you go to apply.bitbranding.co and you can directly apply. Or if you'd like the free training, go ahead and click the link below either in the podcast description, YouTube description, or Facebook. The Marketing Natives Podcast is a production of Bit Branding. 